Beloved people, this morning, uh, I think it would be a good idea if you would follow along with me in the bulletin because there are many, many points that have to be presented this morning. And the first one is that no matter how carefully we proofread things, we will always find things wrong at the wrong time. And there are two items in today's bulletin that are wrong after the most careful of proof proofreading. And it just struck me just a moment ago when I read David the prophet. It is not David the prophet. It is Daniel the prophet. So we'll try to correct that next year's bulletin, hopefully. In any event, this morning, I, at, this, at this point, we'll merely point these out. I will explain them more, more clearly in a moment, especially for those who may be newcomers and are visitors and who need uh, a little more explanation. Attached to this bulletin are the Advent readings, and we will speak of that in a little bit. Also attached to this mu mu uh, uh, bulletin uh, is the announcement concerning the blessed wheat which is up here in these little packets that all the older ones of us know to help yourselves to them and take them home and we will explain the matter in a moment. Next week begins Advent and therefore the preparation should go up now for the setting up of the Advent wreath uh, as we are accustomed to set up at this time. Also, it is time to take out, if we, if we have put them away, it is time to take, up the, take out and dust and prepare and get ready the monastic home altars. Set them up and uh, get them so that you will use them uh, during the Advent season. Thursday of this week, is the feast day of the Miraculous Medal. And I certainly encourage devotion to the Miraculous Medal. And the following day, Friday, is uh, the feast of St. Catherine Labore, and who was the one that distributed the Miraculous Medal. Also this week, Thursday is Thanksgiving Day. And may we take this, and may I take this opportunity at the moment to wish every one of us a very holy, a very thankful, and a very lovely Thanksgiving Day. A point that I wish to make is that uh, Friday, from time immemorial, the Friday after Thanksgiving is not a day of abstinence. The reason for that is that the leftovers of the previous day can be used up on Friday. That's the way it is stated. But here come the literalists, you know. There's always the literalists in the crowd. So the literalists have, literalists have said, the only meat that we may eat on Friday is the leftover meat from Thursday. That's nonsense. Friday is not a day of abstinence. You can eat roast, barbecue sandwiches, hamburgers, anything you wish. It is not a day of abstinence. So, because it's been, remember that the law was made for man, not man for the law. All right? Uh, today, there are today there are people that have problems with that, but uh, uh, they must be reasonable. We hereby announce also that um, on uh, the 8th of December is coming up, not this week, but next week, or the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, which is Holy Day of Obligation, and uh, the Masses in this church on that day will be at 6, 8, and, uh, at six at 8 in the morning, and seven in the evening. 
The date for confirmation and the date for ordination has now been reset. It's in today's bulletin, and the, con uh, the ordination will be on Saturday, January the 10th, and confirmation will be the following day, Sunday, January the 11th. Now, we go to the blessed wheat. Advent is a period of time of reconstruction. It is somewhat like Lent, but not to the same degree. But it is nevertheless a time of reconstruction. It is a time for us to look and see what in us needs to be corrected. And we have this little custom of the blessed wheat. Especially is this designed for the little children, but it is certainly and probably more necessary for us grown-ups than it is for the little children. That each day, first of all, you have to have a container which we have prepared any shallow dish of any size, maybe a foot square, maybe a couple of inches deep, perhaps one of these aluminum uh, pans from the store would be quite adequate, and put some potting soil in it. Do not put any holes or drain holes in the bottom, because you will have problems at a later date. But rather, have this prepared. Take the little grains of wheat, one at a time, I have performed this act of mortification. Whatever it is. And I take one grain of wheat and plant it. And the next act of mortification during that day, I will go back and take another grain of wheat and plant it and so on. And these little grains of wheat will sprout one at a time. And they will represent to us the little acts of mortification that we have endured throughout the season of Advent. And these acts of mortification, this little pan that has little grains of wheat growing in the soil. This is what we will take and present to the baby Jesus on Christmas Day. A simple little gift. Monetarily, it is worthless. But spiritually, it is totally above value. Because it represents what we have given to Almighty God in the baby Jesus. As we look back upon ourselves <clears throat> and we can see how we have treated the neighbors around and about us, our wives, our husbands, our children, our brothers and sisters, or whatever, whatever. How badly have we crowded these people about as we move about with all of our pomposities? You know? Once upon a time, I read a nice little thing that showed up somewhere, and I haven't forgotten it. And it is brief and so much to the point. It might sound a little funny, but it is so much to the point. Because, I, I mentioned it, in a, I quoted it in a second. Because so many of us, as we move into the rights of way of life, 
that we take over and push everybody else aside. This is what it's about, my beloved people. It isn't in the number of prayers that we say. It is entirely in how we treat our brother and our sister. This is the little quotation. Don't take it as a funny, but take it as something extremely serious as we go through life. But your right to swing your fist ends abruptly where my nose begins. That kind of says it all. As we move through life, pushing everybody aside to make room for us. This is what Advent is much about. It is not a matter of any rules and regulations that are being posted. You do this, you don't do that. And of course, as always is the case, it depends on the degree of love that is in our hearts. Not in our minds, not in love does not exist in the mind. Because the mind proceeds to, 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 to define love. And the mind is fickle. And it changes all the time. It is totally inconstant. The only constancy there is, is in the heart. And that's what we offer to Almighty God. Love does not, it cannot exist in the mind. There's another quotation, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. These are strong words, and I know it. But the subject material is strong. And unless and until we can turn loose of our almighty selves and all powerful selves and all proper selves and all important selves, until that takes place, my beloved people, do not think for one agonizing second that there will be peace in our hearts. Love is where we have to come from. And love is the feast that we are preparing ourselves for. So as we move into Advent, it is not just another time of the year. It is not just a refreshing of that which has been. It is a refreshing of that which is. And we have to come to understand that. Take this wheat, we older ones, and give example to the children. And don't make a big show of it. Oh, here I come. Here, where's the wheat, dear? I need one grain. 
I've just uh, performed an act of something or other, and I need to go plant it. Don't wear any flashlight, flashing lights, when you do an act that belongs to God. That has to be personal. It has to be private. And it has to be spiritual. <coughs> so there it is. The Advent wreath. The Advent wreath is another custom. Which I think we all know about. And each week the father of the family goes and lights another candle <coughs> and says the prayer. And as soon as that is done, then he will turn to the Advent readings. And he, or the mother, if she's in charge, will read one of the Advent readings. Not just as a machine would read the reading, but read it from your heart and ask the blessing of Almighty God in that reading. Each day is different. However, the very first week there's a mistake and on Tuesday and Wednesday of that week, of the first week, we have the same reading. This was only brought out to my attention just before Mass, and I couldn't do anything about it. So read the same reading twice. It won't hurt anything. But do these readings when all of the family is seated at the table together at the same time, not piecemeal. The things that pertain to God, the things that pertain to his blessed mother, the things that pertain to that which is the salvation of our mortal souls, my beloved people, what is more important than that? What is it? Is it the things of this earth? Indeed not. When we heard the gospel a, min a moment ago, it is not so much that we are looking at that gospel and it causes us to wonder about this cosmic cataclysm and that we all feverishly are waiting for it to take place. I myself, you know, how long, O oh Lord? And we expect God to bring forth a great cataclysm where everybody will see his majesty. That's not where the cataclysm is to take place, my beloved people. The cataclysm is to take place in my heart. Not my mind. But in my heart. And you want to know something? You wonder at how much power and energy is needed for that. Has it ever occurred to you that Almighty God did not use as much energy in creating the entire universe as he needs to use for the softening of one man's heart. The reason being 
in the creation of the universe, God did not meet with resistance. We will resist no matter. And as long as we resist, let us not talk about sanctity. And that is that. My beloved people, can we be happy in all of this? Huh. It's the only happiness there is. The only thing is we have twisted and tortured and tormented and turned happiness inside out and outside in. And we have deformed happiness to the misery that we see every place we look when we move about God's world. Happiness with God cannot be described. So, on Thanksgiving, let us go forth and give thanks to God for all that good that he has done. Sometimes we get so completely absorbed in looking at what's wrong with things that we forget to look at what's right with things. And God is in the center of it all. Nevertheless, it just takes us to see what we see and to hear what we hear. That's all it takes. And all it takes is a change in our point of view. That's all. It does not require any tremendous exhaustive study or whatever. It simply asks for a change in the point of view as we go living or trying to live our Catholic life. My beloved people,